low carb diets are bad for your health. At least that's what you could infer if you just read the title and abstract of a recent study which looked at the impact of low carb diets on the immune system and iron regulation in the body. Low carb diets have gained popularity over the last couple of years with lots of professional and recreational athletes dabbling in them. In theory, they have the potential to improve your ability to burn fat, which could help with performance, but it seems like they could have some potential nasty side effects too. This all starts with your body's response to exercise and how it adapts to it. When you exercise, you create a stress response, which your body notices. Its aim is to build itself back up stronger from that exercise so that it can cope with that same stimulus better next time. Researchers looked into whether there was any difference in certain measurements after exercise when they compared athletes on a high carbohydrate diet to athletes on a low carb, high fat diet of the same calories, as well as a low energy diet that contained carbs. They found that when athletes followed a low carb diet, their white blood cell count, cortisol and the level of hepcidin, which is a hormone involved in the absorption of iron, were all significantly higher after exercise compared to their baseline results. The potential consequences of this is that a low carb diet could lead to a weakened immune system and mean athletes become iron deficient. These things are obviously bad, so I wanted to understand whether this could really be the case. If you're new here, by the way, then hey, my name's James and I'm a registered sport and exercise nutritionist and love to talk about all things related to food, science and sport. So, the study in question recruited 28 male elite race walkers to participate during a four-week training camp, which contained two six-day dietary phases. At baseline, all athletes went on a high carb and high energy diet as a control diet, of which 75% of their daily calories were carbohydrates. On day six of this diet, they completed a 25 kilometer race walking test where their blood was taken to determine their iron regulation immune and inflammatory response to exercise. The participants were split into three groups, which were the control group with that same high carb diet, a low carb high fat diet of equal calories to the high carb group, and a low calorie or low energy diet which still contained carbohydrates. On day six, they then performed another 25K race walk simulation with the same blood tests. Now, these are some of the results from the study and I'm going to walk you through them and don't worry, they are not as scary as they seem. This one shows the interleukin-6 response after exercise for the three different dietary groups. IL-6 is a protein which is produced in response to exercise, but it's also heavily involved in the immune response of the body too, and can be produced at other times like during infection. The star and the dollar sign mean that the low carb high fat group had a higher level of interleukin-6 after their 25K walk compared to their baseline test and compared to the high carb control group. Now this graph shows the hepcidin concentrations for the three groups. Hepcidin is a hormone which controls how much iron can be absorbed from your intestines. And essentially the higher your hepcidin level, the less iron you can absorb. This star means that the low carb high fat group had a significantly higher level than their baseline testing when they consumed a high carb diet. This graph, shows the white blood cell count of the groups. And again, this shows a significantly higher post-exercise level in the low carb, high fat group compared to their baseline, but also a larger response after exercise compared to the control and the low energy group. Finally, this graph shows that the low carb group had a significantly higher cortisol after exercise compared to their baseline testing. At baseline testing, both the low carb and low energy groups had a significant decrease in their cortisol levels after exercise compared to their fasting level on the control diet. Now we need to talk about what these results actually mean what context we can apply them in and whether they are actually important. Let's talk about iron regulation and what impact the low carb, high fat diet might have on this. The results of this study demonstrated that a low carb diet caused an increase in hepcidin levels. Because higher levels of hepcidin mean that less iron is absorbed from the intestine, there is a potential that this could cause athletes on a low carb diet to be more prone to iron deficiency. This isn't great and can lead to a myriad of problems. Now, over the short term, this isn't really an issue because six or seven days 
isn't going to make a significant difference to your iron stores. But if you think that an athlete might be following a low carb diet for weeks, months, or even years, this becomes a much more significant issue. If iron absorption continued to be worse over the long term, then these athletes may need to focus on iron rich sources at mealtimes away from exercise or consider something like an iron supplement. If not, athletes on a low carb diet could then develop iron deficient anemia, which as well as being bad for endurance exercise performance is also bad for health generally. This study also demonstrated that the six day low carb diet caused a higher white cell count and cortisol level after exercise compared to the control and low energy groups. This in itself might not be a good thing because it might mean athletes become more susceptible to infection. However, we need to look at the findings in context. Although they were elevated compared to their baseline findings by up to 100%, they were only slightly above the range that's clinically normal. So it's actually quite possible that this has no clinical relevance, especially over the short term. This is also only a very small part of the immune system and doesn't give the whole picture. For example, a different study by the same group of researchers found that adherence to a low carb diet reduced other parts of the immune system over the short term. But after 31 days, it had returned to normal. This highlights that we need to be careful about what conclusions we draw from this study. And in my opinion, this data about the immune system isn't particularly useful in isolation. It only highlights that we need to understand it further and gather more information. We're going to talk about the practical takeaways in a moment, but first we should talk about the length of this study because it's both a good and bad thing. The study itself was over four weeks, but the dietary periods were only over six days. Six days isn't a long time, especially if you're trying to understand the long-term consequences. And as I mentioned, does this six days really represent the long term? And is six days enough to cause ketogenic adaptation that make it a fair study? Well, first up, we do know that you can induce ketosis and adaptation within that time frame. There's some great data out there that has shown this in previous trials, so I don't think that is an issue. The bigger problem is whether things do change again over a longer period of time as more time is spent adapted to a certain diet. And Here's the really tricky part. This study did show that there were potential issues with the low carb diet for athletes. Whilst having more data is brilliant, we have to consider the ethical considerations here. How ethical is it to put an athlete on a prolonged diet which could actually have negative health effects? Studies like this are needed to start scoping the issues so that we can understand where more research is needed and how to approach it. So with all of that said, what can we actually take away from this study? Can we just say that low carb diets are bad, high carb diets are good, and that's all there is to it? Well, not really. We need more data to understand this better, but it absolutely is a start. We have to use other research too, of which in honesty, there is mounting evidence that low carb diets are potentially harmful. But we can't just apply this to everyone either. This study only included males, and so we can't make the same assumption for females. Female physiology is different, and we don't know whether the same findings would have happened. This is even more important because the suggestion from the study is that low energy diets aren't harmful, but low carb diets are. The study isn't actually saying that, but it's easy to infer it. We know that low energy diets can cause a multitude of other issues, but if you remember in the results of this study, it didn't really seem to show that. So we can't just say that a low energy diet is fine too because it's really not. I've spoken about this before, but in my opinion, the majority of athletes are best consuming a diet with plenty of carbohydrates to fuel their training. At this point in time, I've seen very little positive research about low carb diets in relation to exercise, but there is so much positive evidence for carbs. I think trying low carb diets just leads to under fueling whilst searching for marginal gains which might not even be there. It's better to just fuel your training well, stay healthy and train consistently over the long term. So as a bit of a sum up, we can't take the results of this study and just generalize with it, but it does add to the growing body of evidence demonstrating detrimental effects of low carb diets. Now, I'd love to know if you have any experience with low carb diets, so let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I've put a couple of videos here for you to watch, which explore similar topics, and I think you'll find them interesting.